Hey y'all, we're continuing down this thread of talking about toxins in our products. Not because I love to harp on all the dangers that are out there in the world, but because I want you to be educated as a consumer when you go out into the marketplace. Take those bottles, flip them over, and see what you are buying. This is true for food, this is true for cosmetics, this is true for household products. It is so important that we do this. Okay, I don't know if you heard the statistic, but they say that in one month time, in 30 days time, right? I'm in the month of April right now. So in the month of April, I will be exposed to more toxic chemicals and just chemicals in general than my grandparents were exposed to in the entire span of their life. Okay, so 80, 90 years of their life, they didn't even encounter nearly the amount of chemicals that I'm going to encounter in one month. That's whether I'm going into the store or into a restaurant or buying food at the grocery store or what I bring into my home. So it really matters. And it's not just matters to us, it matters to our generation of little people that we're raising to make informed and conscious decisions so that they can walk in health and wellness, right? So this is something we can know better, do better, and pass it on to generations. Today we're gonna talk about parabens. Parabens is like a buzzword in the natural foods, you know, anti-toxin community. There's a couple of them that are buzzwords, but parabens is one. Um, and here's how you can remember it. I love it. I had a young living leader and she said this. She was like, girl, you need to break up with the bins. The bins are bad news dudes. And I, it's stuck in my head. I'm like, break up with the bins. Why? Because we've got methyl paraben, ethyl paraben, butyl paraben, propyl paraben. There's a whole lot of bins. You don't want them just if you see anything paraben, run. Now let's just talk about where you might normally see them. You're gonna particularly see parabens in cosmetics. Why? Because it is a preservative. Thank you, I lost that word for a second. It's a preservative. We need preservatives in our products because the goal is when these companies make whatever they are, they're gonna sit on the shelf in the store for a really, really long time and bio, any, any biological product is going to break down and deteriorate over time unless it has a preservative. I don't know why I'm stumbling on that word right now. If it has a preservative in it, it will stop the degradation of whatever that product is. Now there are natural preservatives that exist in nature, but they're expensive. You can't make a lot of money selling your preservative to a lot of other companies who need preservatives. Now can you? So natural products are never going to be the way there are, that any chemical company is going to lean. So hence we find things like parabens. Um, you are going to find them in antiperspirants, in shampoos, in face scrubs, shower cleaners. Okay, so household products as well as personal care products, scouring scrubs. And I don't know about you, but it terrifies me to know that, the, that whatever I'm putting on my face, the same chemicals are gonna go into the stuff that's scouring my shower. That doesn't seem right. There's something wrong with that. But yet that is what parabens are. And remember, it is a preservative. So what does it do? It acts as an endocrine disruptor. If you remember, your endocrine system is your hormone system. So when something is going in and it's messing with your hormones, hormones are the thing that regulate everything in your body. They regulate your mood, they regulate your sleep, they regulate your energy levels, they regulate, oh, everything. Uh, hormones are pretty much everything. They are the messenger system of our entire body that tells all of your cells what to do. So if you have chemicals in there that are mimicking hormones, they're basically attaching to a cell. They're giving that cell information because that's what a hormone does. It's an it's a molecule of instruction. It goes to a cell, it plugs in and like whispers in the cell's ear, hey, the boss says you need to blah, 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 execute orders. And the cell's like, yes, sir. And it starts executing orders immediately without any questions. But when it's a natural hormone, your cell executes and then it's done its job, it washes its hand of it and it moves on to whatever the next task is. When it's an unnatural hormone, in the case of an endocrine disruptor that mimics estrogen or something else like it, that chemical binds onto the cell, it issues instructions to the cell, the cell recognizes, doesn't question, the cell kicks into work, yes sir, it starts executing whatever function it is. First of all, it's not a function that our body asked it to do, so that's danger number one. Number two, that function doesn't shut off it continues to execute the function and execute the function and execute the function until you're like, stop the madness. And yet that's where dis-ease or disease comes from. 
okay? You've got an overload of some sort of function happening in your body that shouldn't be happening in the first place. And you can't turn off the switch because it's a, it's a synthetic chemical that doesn't know how to read the body and switch off. But I'm getting down a lecture series. <laughs> I have other classes that talk about this, okay? So let's, so when we're talking about endocrine disruptors, you're also mimicking or you're messing with the reproductive system. So we found early puberty in young children. Hello, have we seen that's epidemic in our society right now. Decreased sperm counts. Pregnant and nursing mothers, pay attention. This is a big issue and you can pass it on to your child. And mostly we're seeing massive, huge increase of cell proliferation in breast cancer because of parabens. In fact, they have actually taken a tumor, a lump, out of many women's breasts, and when they cut it open right in the middle, what do they find? A big old globule of, guess what? Parabens. Parabens are bad, and they are sitting at the core, at the center of this breast cancerous mass, and yet the chemical companies still say, mm, you can't prove to me that there's a link. I'm just saying, do your own homework and see what science is showing us, not what the chemical company lobbyists are saying. So avoid the bends, break up with the bends. Methylparaben, ethylparaben, propylparaben, butylparaben. You don't want any bends in your life. Be an educated consumer. Go to Young Living where you know everything is green, everything is clean, everything is toxin free. You don't even have to worry about it. And guess what? When you buy your toxin free stuff, from Young Living and you're on Essential Rewards, you get all the oils for free every month. It's so awesome, plus points back when you purchase. It's really a no-brainer way of ditching and switching, ditching the toxins that you would normally buy in the marketplace and switch them with something that is gonna serve you and your children and your children's children. This is your chance to make a difference, so get on it. Talk to you later.